What's going on? It's your boy Sermon Hip Hop Early dot com, and we're here with Chris Calico. How you feeling? Good man. Congratulations on the album. Yep. It's about a month tomorrow. It'll be a month since the album drop. It will. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Cause man, I just keep pushing. You know, when stuff drops, I just push forward. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about like what's happening now. Like what can we do to progress this yeah. brand of Chris Calico? Right, and you're definitely on tour, so you know you gotta stay in that mindset too. Yeah. Man. So, was there a moment in your life that really sparked the idea to do an album like that? Uh, a couple moments, man. Travis been on my head about doing a singing album forever. Um, you know, he's always been like, man. You know, everybody knows. He said, how? How? He asked me a question. He said, man, you're like a guy that's sorry, that's taking out in the background. He's like, this is everywhere I go. I escape him off from off the bus. <laughs> He's loud in the morning, loud at night. I escaped to come off the bus to do an interview. Here he is in the next room. So, if he knew I was in here doing the interview, he'd come in here and start talking about it. Right, right. Yes. This is a real thing. <laughs> so back to the, to the so, moment. Yes. Uh, Travis said, you can probably outwrap everybody. I mean, how far do you want that to take you though? Do you just want to be everybody's favorite rapper? The, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper type of dude? Or what do you really think? He said, man, I think people are more of a fan of your singing songs. I think you should do a singing album. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I gotta show everybody. I'm like, all the time, I'm this elite MC. I'm not just a singer that tries to rap. I actually can probably hang with or out-rap even the best of them, you know what I'm saying? And he was right. Like, who cares? I mean, that's tight, but who cares, man? Like, just make good songs. So he convinced me to do a singing album. And uh, I kind of always wanted to do it, but I was kind of scared. But he pushed me into it, and I did it, man. And that's my, that's what I would do. When I do a singing album, it sounds like that. It sounds like pop, R&B. It sounds like opera. It sounds like everything mixed up in, you know, to, in, a, in a one, uh, its own genre, which doesn't even have a name. While you were recording the album, were there any like memorable studio sessions that really stood out to you? I mean, I was going through a lot of stuff at the time, man. I was going through a lot of like mental anguish, man. And uh, I, I kind of was going through, even though you don't, you probably can only tell on one or two songs, but I was going through like a super depression at that time. And so when I get extreme emotion, any which way that means, you know, any which way that goes, it brings out a lot of creative stuff in me. Mm -hmm. It makes me ultra creative. If I'm really emotional, man, I can really write like quickly and stuff that's uh, very powerful. So that's what that album was, man. Mm -hmm. So your mom's on the intro doing the, the words and everything. How did you feel the first time that you heard that? It was weird how that went together. That's actually a memorable moment. Um, I brought my mother in to do the intro for my song that called Logged Off. And um, she actually... Uh, Ended up saying, you know what? Can I can I say some other stuff? I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna put it, Mama. And she was like, just let me just write some stuff that I'm thinking and just say it. If you can use it, cool. If not cool. And she wrote this piece. So this was like about four or five songs in. Now after I finished the album, months later, I had a horn section come in to play on Orangutan. Mm -hmm. My song Orangutan with the whole uh, with the whole roster that there on it, you know. And then I was like, man, I don't have an intro for the album. Write something. And they wrote a whole piece. I didn't know how long it was, nothing. I said, hey, man, take Mama's thing and put the horn section thing they wrote and put those things together. Let's see if they, if we can shorten one and make, do that. It was the exact same length. What she wrote and said and the horn section, it was the exact length of it. It was just perfect. It felt like it was divinely uh, done. You know what I'm saying? And, um, it, it just took its own life, man. Once I heard that over those horns, but little, 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 they heard saying that stuff over the top of it, man. It just worked so great, man. And, <clears throat> and it seemed like we planned it that way, but we actually didn't. And that ended up being the intro for my album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the significance of only working with strange music artists this time around? I actually had a in mind, man, to do to get several artists on this. Actually, CeeLo was supposed to do a song, uh, the song called Didn't Want to Wake You, but, you know, I think he ran out of time. With his life, um, I wanted to get Flo Rider on the album on one. Uh, I was trying to get uh, uh, 
Lil John on my song No Nos. I was trying to get a lot of people on uh, on this album, man. Uh, I was trying to get Pharrell on the album. Like I was trying to go for some big features. But man, my time and everybody else's time, uh, uh, it just didn't end up working out like that, man. So I was totally fine with just leaving all strange folks on it. You know what I'm saying? These dudes are ultra creative. And to me, we have to feed each other. You know what I'm saying? Like we feed each other. Because those are out, their album sell, my album sell. So I think we should just, I was like, we should just keep it in the family anyway, man. The, 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 the money that's generated from um, the CD sales, to me, why not share it with my dudes that I'm out here working with? You know, my coworkers, my brothers. You know what I'm saying? So I was fine with that. So once again, man, these things, with this album, everything just kind of came together on its own. You know, even things that I wanted to happen, when they didn't happen, I wasn't disappointed. I felt like, man, it's supposed to happen like this. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be like just me and my brothers on this album. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned some of the names that you were trying to get. Yep. And I know in the past I've asked Tech, like some of his dream collaborations. So what are some of your dream collaborations? That's Let's them. See. Everybody Let's... name is them. Probably only, it's some people I haven't, that I would love to do music with, man, that I haven't done. Even some country artists. Um, even like, I mean, like John Legend, man. I mean, I would love to work with Legend. Um, you know, I love work with Kanye. I would love to, um, uh, um, you know, rappers, my favorite rappers, gone, Notorious Big, my all time favorite rapper. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of other good guys out here, but you know, those are some of my, those are my dream collaborations. Most of them I was trying to get on the last project. So we'll see, man. The more popular I get, though, the easier those things will be able to achieve. Too. Definitely, definitely. So you mentioned Biggie's your favorite rapper. Do you Absolutely. have a favorite Biggie song? Of all time? Um, no, I mean, I like so many different ones, man. It just depends on the mood. Yeah, it depends on the mood, man. It's like, a lot of people are like, man, my favorite song is blah, blah, blah for me. But it depends. If you're mad, then it might be this. If you're mm -hmm. sad, it might be Stop the World. You know, if you're ready to party, it might be Talk About It or Girls Like That. You know what I mean? So, you're right. It probably depends on the mood, man. I, I love a lot of the stuff that he did. Period. So I can't pick a favorite. Mm -hmm. Going back to the album, you ended the regular edition of the album with Happiest. Mm -hmm. uh, why was it important for that to be the last song on the regular edition? Because that's how I feel. That's really how I probably feel in life. And I feel like that's something. I feel like that whole album was everything, all of the emotions I go through. And then that song's summed it all up. Because even though this seems like the best life ever, there's ups and downs with this too, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, wow, and that's really how I am. I'm, I'm a pretty, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a comedian for real most of the time. But what I notice about comedians and creative people is that we are really just kind of happy-ish. Mm -hmm. We seem happy, this seems like the best life ever, but it's actually, uh, I notice a lot of creative people are, are a little tortured. We tortured souls a little bit, man, you know what I'm saying? So. It's like we never achieve that complete euphoria. That's very we true. stay right here, and that's what keeps us able to be this creative to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially somebody that's an emotional cat like me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So after getting everything out on go, all the stuff that you talked about, how do you feel about your life right now? Oh, it's the same, dude. It's the same. It's great. It's torturous. It's fun. It's work. It's we're beat up, we're kicking it, we're, I mean, it's everything, dude. Same thing, man, my, my life's been this way for a long time. Uh, you know, one of these days, I might not be just happy, I might be totally happy, but right now, I'm okay staying right here, man, because it allows me to be in this creative pocket. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool with where I'm at. Do you know what would make you totally happy? Do you have an idea? Or? No, it seems like more money would, but that's, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't make me totally happy. It seems like, I really want a huge hit, man. I want like a big, huge hit that lasts for years. That's not what necessarily make me happy. That just would probably achieve a goal that I want to have. Mm -hmm. I want one of these hits that just, uh, that's just last forever. Not just with our fan base. I mean like with the whole world. I, 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 that's one of the goals I want to achieve. and That probably make me happier, mm -hmm. but not happiest. It's I crazy because like when I listen to your music over the years, I'm like, man. This Hits. would sound great on the radio. Hits. Hits, man. I remember Travis telling me before, man, man, you gave me 15 singles. I'm like, I, I don't know how to do nothing else because I'm a hook writer. So hooks is my specialty. 
So X things are gonna sound like hits, even when they're darker songs. You know what I'm saying? That even stuff like some of the stuff I do for tech, even like the darker songs I do for me, like Stop the World, it still sounds like a hit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to me, you know what I mean? So, um, but we're, we're we're actually doing radio on this uh, on this particular album. That's song. Um, well, the first one we talk about it. So uh, I, I think that's gonna be like. Mm -hmm. It feels like one of these songs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it one, one of those ones. Too. Yeah, dude, it was like you can't hear that song and just be like, "That's cool." <laughs> when you hear that song, it feels like okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even to me, when I hear this album, it feels like to me like, damn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's not me being on my own nuts either. I'm like literally, I listen to that album. I try to listen to it like, okay, take myself out of the equation. I don't want to achieve anything from it. So let me just listen to it from a super critical musical uh, standpoint. And I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I love it. And I make people music that I think people will love, that I think can trump other stuff that I hear and all of that. You know what I mean? When I do when I do songs, like I'm in competition with everybody. That's how I feel. When when we did Speed em, I'm in competition with Eminem. Mm -hmm. I'm in competition with Tech Nine. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, okay. I gotta get it. Although that song, not, that song, let me let me back up. I did my first hook before anybody else was even on the song. Like I didn't even know that song was supposed to be just me and Tech. And when I found like Eminem was on it, I was like, whoa! But I didn't doubt my verse though. Mm -hmm. I knew that verse was special. You know what I'm saying? And then I saw him on an interview talking about me, which made my heart go up in my throat. I'm like, duh, mm -hmm. this dude's like an elite MC, and for him to be like trying to, he was trying to bust, say my verse. You know what I'm saying? On Sway in the Morning, I was like, whoa. It's a huge achievement. This dude, Eminem, is trying to rap my verse. Like, okay, now I know, now I know I'm on with something. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay, so last two questions. What is the last great book you read? Uh, it's called Self Mastery. It's by. <sighs> you would ask me that. Some, something green. Uh, hold on. I gotta tell you this. It's um, it's it's called self mastery. Um, I, I don't remember what the author is, but the reason why I, I want to tell you who the author is is because it really helped me. This book kind of changed my life. One of the dudes that produces with me, his name is Young Fire. He only produced one on this album. Seven produced most of this album, but my dude Young Fire, where the heck are my books, man? I let you know I don't really be. I do audio books, and I don't um. I don't read a lot because I have ADD. So when I'm reading, I read the paragraph over and over and over because mm -hmm. by the time I'm in the middle of using it, by the time I'm in the middle of reading it, my brain goes to something else. Um, crap. Self Master here. The book that does Dick Sutphin. Dick Sutphin is the author. It looks like that. <laughs> Self Mastery, man. And it's, um, it kind of speaks from a, um, it's just about being zenful. Because my brain is, is, is hyperactive. I'm a hypervigilant person, which means I see everything, I feel everything, I sense everything. I have sensory overload in my brain constantly. You know what I'm saying? And this book is about how to just gather yourself and be calm, zenful. It kind of speaks from a, a Buddhist standpoint, which I'm not a Buddhist at all. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the ways that the Buddhists try to teach people to just accept life and to be calm. This book talks about that, man. So Self Mastery, and the other one I'm in the middle of reading right now is called Glow. It's, uh, it's about Rick James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, Rick James is like one of my favorite musicians. Rick James, Prince, um, some of my biggest. It's like a biography of Yes, it's a biography, Rick James. Yeah, man, it's really good. I notice when I read these books about these entertainers, we all have a lot of stuff in common. Mm -hmm. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> That's awesome. Bitch. Okay, last question. So let's say Strange Music is producing a Chris Calico action figure. What accessories are coming with it? Gloves. I always have gloves on. I just don't have them on right now. <laughs> I, always, I usually always have on gloves and some kind of hat. A fedora or my hat that I've been rocking lately that Tech calls my Amish bonnet. <laughs> my Amish bonnet. A baseball hat to the side, to the right, cock to the right. Gloves, sunglasses. Are you rocking the, the usual performance gear? Or you? Uh, I would, you'd have to change the clothes on the Chris Calico. I 
It's gonna have a button up on. Uh, sometimes it's gonna have a strange music uniform that we do with Tech Nine. When I perform by myself, though, I, I don't think it's gonna have one of uniform. Uh, uniform, sorry, my voice is like. Uh, but um, it's definitely gonna have a hat, sunglasses, and gloves. And something probably that's got either the Chris Calico logo on it or the snake in the back, man. Mm -hmm. uh, strange music. We definitely we got to talk to Travis and get that That's That's dope. for the next hour. That's actually a good idea. Chris Calico action figure. <laughs> it needs to be like this tall, like the old school action. You know what I'm saying? When I was a little bitty kid, the action figures was like this, and then they went to this. <laughs> and they went you know up saying? in price. Too. Yeah, they went up in price, down in size. Ridiculous. How that works? Everything phones, man. Because I'm a kid of the '80s and '90s, man. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it uh, it, you know, the action figures right in the '80s, it was like zip. Yeah, when I got a lot of the Star Wars was cracking. Yeah, I got a lot of wrestlers, so I know exactly uh -huh. what you're talking about. They yeah, were right. over years. Now the wrestling action figures, though, some of them are still big and some of them are small. Mm -hmm. You go, do you go see wrestling? It comes here, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to see NXT next week. Okay, I, I go still too, man. That's probably something I never talk about. That I actually go to WWE almost every time it comes to Kansas City. Really? Constantly. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I don't talk about it, but I go every time. My son is a big fan too. Mm -hmm. But I came up, you know, I'm like I said, I'm in the '80s and '90s, so Hulk Hogan was cracking, Andre the Giant, and you know, all of the Rock's family members like Jimmy Superfly, Snooker, mm -hmm. people like that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I know some of the newer dudes, Roman Reigns, and these. You have an all-time favorite? Probably the Rock, man. It's hard to beat the Rock. Though. I mean, I like. I, 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 I would have to say the great dudes, the dudes that are that everybody else loves, who I love, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, John Cena. Mm -hmm. How can you, you can't, you can't throw on them dudes. But I also like who? Stone Cold. Stone Cold, <laughs> dog. Stone Cold, dude. He's What's like, he's in, he, he's in the mix too. Yeah. But you know what I like, man, that people probably never really fooled with, and not just because of his theme song, is Brodus Clay. Okay. You like the dancing? I like yeah. He was a character. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I like him, man. Not necessarily as a wrestler as much, and I met him too. Mm -hmm. But probably more as a, I like this song and I like this character. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right, man. I can't leave Stone Cold out, man. <laughs> Stone Cold is the man. He's probably one of the best, man, ever. And he's just like, it seemed like he wasn't that wasn't a character. Like he was like that. Mm -hmm. Even Hulk Hogan seemed like he was playing Hulk Hogan. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, but but like Stone Cold seems like he's like like that mm -hmm. when you see him at Seven Eleven. It's natural. <laughs> yeah, he's drinking a beer. He's got a big badass pickup truck. You know what I'm saying? Cause I got a little, I got a little country boy in me. That's what I drive. I drive a big badass pickup truck mm -hmm. that looks like some country boy. Uh, get, you know stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I cuss on here, but it looks like cuss. Huh? You can cuss. I, I try. I try. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, you know what I mean? So I got some country boy in me, so I admire a country boy in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Okay. That's tight. It's Nobody true. ever asked me that. That's tight. Well, next interview, we definitely going to have to talk more wrestling because I'm a huge fan. We can talk about it all day. Yeah, I, I don't know the new dudes as much, but I, I pay attention enough to know. Adam, our tour manager, mm -hmm. is a diehard wrestling fan. Like, diehard. Like, he sleeps. This is, this is a real thing. He sleeps with a WWE belt in his bunk. If we took this camera and go to his bunk right now, there's a WWE belt in there. What belt is it, you know? I don't know. He's next door. We'll ask him. <laughs> we definitely will. Okay. Well, it's your boy, Starman, HipHopEarly.com. Chris, yeah. as always, thank you for your time. Any last words? Kelly, baby. Oh.